Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Monday, March 18th, 2019 meeting of the Quincy City Council. Mr. Clerk, if you please could call the roll. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor DeBona. Present. Councillor Harris. Present. Councillor Hughes. Here. Councillor Kane. Here. Councillor Liang. Present. Councillor Mahoney. Council McCarthy. Present. Council Palmucci. President Crow. Present. Seven members. We have a Correct. quorum. At this point, um, folks and members of the audience, if you would please uh, rise and join me in a moment of silence, taking into uh, consideration those brave men and women who so courageously defend our country. If you would all join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, counselors. Mr. Clerk, if you would please read into the record the open meeting law. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through an, any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or tra transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived, by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Thank you, kind sir. And with that, the first item on the agenda. First item on the agenda, Mr. President, is Council Order 2019-053, Adoption 5-Year Multi-Hazard Mitigation Plan. I believe this, Council Harris. Yes. Uh, send that to committee. Say one more time. Uh, send that to the Environmental Committee. Okay, motion made by Councilor Harris to refer to Environmental, second by Councilor McCarthy. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Next uh, item on the agenda, please, Mr. Clerk. Next item is 2019-054, amending title section 7.0, 7 special residential regulations, adding section 7.1.14, definition of affordable housing. Councilor Liang. I'm, I'm sorry, one more time. It's the ordinance committee. Okay, I'd like to refer, so motion made by Councilor Liang, second by Council McCarthy to refer to ordinance. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? It, item is on its way to <coughs> ordinance. Uh, next item on the agenda, please, Mr. Clerk. Next item is 2019-055. It's a gift, $500. Motion to waive the reading. Motion made by Councilor Kane to waive the reading on the motion, Councilor. Motion to accept the gift and please send a thank you note. Okay, motion made to accept the gift and send thank you by Councilor Kane, second by Councilor DeBona. Any discussion, Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. 2019-056. Nope, call the roll. Oh, sorry, sorry about that, Councilor. Okay. Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Hughes. Councilor Liang. Yes. Councilor Mahoney. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Palmucci. President Crow. Yes. Seven. Seven members. The item, the gift is accepted. <clears throat> Next uh, item, please, Mr. Clerk. Next item is 2019-056, gift. Motion to waive the reading. Thank you. Motion made by Council Kane. Motion to accept the gift and please send a thank you note. Motion made by Council Kane, second by Council DeBona. Any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Clerk, if you would. Please call the roll. Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Hughes. Councilor Liang. Yes. Councilor Mahoney. Yes. Councilor McCarthy. Yes. Councilor Palmucci. President Crow. Yes. Seven members. The gift is accepted. Next item on the agenda, please, Mr. Clerk. Next door is 2019-056. Get $500 for credit union for Council on Aging. Yeah, and uh, motion to accept the gift. Please send it over. You just motion that? Yes. Okay. Motion made by Council Kane, second by Council DeBona. Any discussion? 
Mr. Clark, you will please call the roll. Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Hughes. Councilor Liang. Yes. Councilor Mahoney. Yes. Councilor McCarthy. Yes. Councilor Pelmucci. Yes. Council President Crow. Yes. A hey, members, the gift is received. Next item on the agenda, please, Mr. Clark. Next item is Council Order 2019-057, a gift for 900 for various donors for deer. We already did that. Next one down, the resolve. Oh, five, eight. Oh, sorry. Okay. Oops, sorry about that, Council. Okay. 2019-058, resolve senior citizen snow shoveling pilot program. Thank you, um, Mr. Clark. This, quite honestly, is uh, hopefully an answer to a question that I get uh, somewhat sporadically or frequently, um, obviously during heavier times of snow. Um, the, the question comes in the form of uh, you know, senior citizens reaching out looking for assistance uh, with various uh, snow removal at their residence. Um, you know, it's, it's always interesting as a ward counselor to kind of get that inquiry um, and not necessarily having a tool in the toolbox outside of maybe neighborhood kids that you've been in contact with looking to, uh, you know, for, um, to help folks out with snow shoveling. So as I sort of process this and thought through it, um, you know, I know that uh, both a requirement of both students from Quincy High School as well as North Quincy High School, they're required to fulfill 40 hours of community service. So um, I thought that this could be a good connection with maybe some of the local youth in the community who are fulfilling an obligation uh, to, to essentially graduate from high school um, and fulfilling a need with the, uh, you know, senior citizens who may need, you know, help with snow removal. Um, leading up to this evening's meeting, I have had uh, conversations with both Superintendent uh, De Cristofaro, the Vice Chairman of the uh, School Committee, uh, Ms. Lebo, as well as several other members of the School Committee as well. And um, They believe that it is something that we should definitely uh, dive a little deeper into, um, really kind of assimilate a, a potential process. and. Uh, you know, hopefully move towards implementation. Um, I've also had a discussion with the chairman of the school committee, uh, the mayor, Mayor Koch, who also thinks it's a fine idea, but uh, where we go from here, obviously, is developing a process that, uh, that is repeatable. So looking to, like we all do, provide uh, solutions to, uh, to problems. Um, and uh, with that, I would, I guess, if anybody had any questions for me, I think the resolution is pretty straightforward. But I would move passage and ask it to lie in Senior Citizens Committee because there is a request for an update on the process come, uh, come spring. And also to have it referred to the school committee because I think that they have um, you know, some additional ideas that they would take and make this even uh, hopefully um, you know, better than it is now. So uh, with that, I'll move approval. If I have a second on that, Council DeBona. Any discussion? This is for approval and to go committee. No discussion. Council DeBona. On the motion, sir. Thank you, thank you, Mr. President. Just um, like to commend yourself, um, uh, President uh, Kroll, for bringing this about. I know um, my service on the uh, school committee uh, some years ago, um, we were talking about these community service hours and how important they are and impact on, on the children doing things in the community. I think this is, a, this is a nice start right here, um, asking about giving back to the community to help the seniors. Um, uh, there's also other ideas like recyclable programs and other things that maybe will spark plug this from this snow removal, um, snow shoveling program for, for um, community service hours. So I'm looking forward to this discussion and I think it's, it's, it's something going in the right direction. So thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Motion made by myself, second by Council DeBona. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Clerk, if you would please call the roll. Council Kane. Yes. Council DeBona. Yes. Council Harris. Yes. Council Hughes. Council Liang. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Palmucci. Yes. President Crow. Yes. Eight members. The item goes to Senior Citizen Committee. Uh, next item on the agenda is the approval of previous meeting minutes from both February 25th as well as March 4th. Um, all those in favor? Opposed? The ayes have it. And uh, the next item on the agenda would be, 
communications and reports from the mayor, other city officers, and city boards. Mr. Walker, you have a report from the mayor, correct? Three, Mr. President. I believe the mayor has a report from the mayor. Well, I didn't know if you wanted to be the introduction or, or what have you, but we are, uh, we are joined this evening. By Mayor Koch and Chris, I want to publicly thank you. I know I had reached out to you before this meeting and asked for an update on the heels of uh, the developing story on Friday. So uh, thank you to yourself and obviously Mayor Koch for putting together uh, not only an update but a PowerPoint deck. So we welcome you, Mayor, to the Quincy City Council and uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President and members of the council. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, for the invitation to uh, give an update. I'd uh, be happy to do that as best we can and then take some questions at the end. Uh, people have questions. I see, Council, you didn't, write for the, you didn't wait for the Granitelle uh, haircut, I see. You're going to really jump. No, I don't have much left. So <laughs> nothing to give. <laughs> well, I, obviously, uh, um, Friday was uh, an interesting day for the, for the city of Quincy, certainly for me. Um, and uh, by way of introduction, we've, uh, we've been at the table with the uh, environmental, the EPA, for more than a year. Uh, and when I say that, we've had a team of experts with their experts. Uh, we've had uh, a city solicitor. We've also had representatives from Goulson and Stores. Uh, we've had uh, our Commission of Public Works and City Engineer, along with Wooded and Curran and Tie and Board representatives to outstanding engineering firms that know our systems inside and out. Um, and uh, I believe that we were making uh, based on the reports from my team, that were, there was some progress being made. So it was a little surprising that um, they did not um, meet our wish was to extend the tolling agreement to continue to have these talks to see if we could get there. Um, so the tolling agreement ended and uh, immediately um, a suit was filed by the U.S. Attorney's Office on the EPA behalf. So um, we walked through it a little bit. So uh, the EPA has charged Quincy with discharging pollutants in the waterways of the United States. And they use the Clean Waters Act, a federal statute that protects the waterways such as Quincy Bay and Boston Harbor. Now, I want to make sure everybody understands this. This isn't unique to Quincy, that uh, many cities, cities and towns have faced this over the years with the EPA. Uh, a number, for example, there's a few there that have either signed uh, consent decrees or uh, are in the process uh, of dealing with this issue in those communities. So uh, there, there are a lot more than this, but that just gives you a flavor of some of the other communities. These specific claims in Quincy, um, claiming that our discharges from the Soren drains into Boston Harbor, this is, this is quite a reach when you look at this list. Uh, Boston Harbor, Quincy Bay, Hingham Bay, Town River Bay, Neponset River, Town River, and Weymouth River. Um, that's pretty amazing how you make that connection with all those bodies of, of water. Um, specific claims in Quincy, we, as you know, we have a number of brooks and creeks in our city. Some of them are in culverts under the ground, but I think everyone's familiar with Furnace Brook and Town Brook. We also have Sagamore Creek and Blacks Creek. Uh, and uh, these discharges uh, are claiming that they get into those waterways specifically in Quincy as well. Discharges of sewers from Quincy Sewer Collection System to Quincy Bay. Uh, in, 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 that's a part of the claim. One of the specific claims is Bayside Road in Squanum. What I want to mention is that um, I want to get this perfectly clear right up front. You know, the, the word out there is that we're dumping sewerage into Quincy Bay. Nothing could be further from the truth. When I think of dumping of sewerage into Quincy Bay, I think of the old MDC operation at Nut Island, when they literally were dumping raw sewerage into Quincy Bay every day from 23 communities uh, south and west of Quincy. Um, what we're seeing is, um, from time to time, things that happen. Uh, you'll see the term SSO, which is a sanitary sewer overflow. An SSO could be a house in West Quincy that has a sewer backup, either through tree roots, a diaper got flushed down, and there's a backup in the cellar. When it's more than a gallon, it has to be reported to the EPA. We're very transparent with all our information and all our reporting. So an SSO is not necessarily dumping sewage into the bay. Uh, now, over time, what happens is uh, there's, there's times that there's breaks in a sewer line, whether it's part of the public line or private line, that nobody really knows about offhand, and then it migrates into the storm drain system. Uh, and then once it's caught, or there's some counts that are high, we then go and look uh, for the source of some of these issues. We're an old city with an old system, 
as you can imagine. I want to get back to Bayside. Bayside Beach in Squanum, I know Councillor Harris is very familiar with it. It's a beautiful section um, facing Quincy Bay and the Cove area of Squanum, uh, beautiful area. So Bayside Beach Sewers, it gives you an example. Uh, it shows you the, uh, uh, the sewer uh, manhole which comes up out of the water uh, and vents the pipe. That was a condition in 2009. In 2010, we replaced the whole section, replaced the manhole. And then in 2016, EPA notified uh, the city of a failed sampling result in this area, which led to an investigation. Uh, and through that investigation, uh, DPW found that we had some, um, some failures in the joint failure along the slope, if you go back to that picture. Uh, and rather than just a spot repair, we decided to go a little bit more than that. So you can see on this map, um, all the blue is replacement and the orange and red are relining of the sewer lines and pipes out there. Um, it's uh, extensive work that we felt was needed as we went through this. Now, some of you may recall many years ago um, that the city underwent some major uh, sewer in improvements. Uh, council, you may have been on the council at the time, uh, Joe Newton. Uh, with Quincy Shore Drive and a number of streets off of Quincy Shore Drive in an effort to um, alleviate any contamination from those sewer lines to our swimming areas. Millions of dollars are spent uh, on that section of Quincy Shore Drive and a number of those streets off of Quincy Shore Drive. So I, what, what uh, bothers me a little bit is the, with the EPA, it doesn't sound like the city's been doing anything, when, when quite, quite the contrary. I said on Friday, I don't need the EPA to tell me um, that we need clean waters in Quincy. I think we all believe that, and I believe we've all been working on that for the last several decades, not just this administration, but prior administrations. Uh, with tens of millions of dollars of improvements to our old infrastructure. There's the result of some of the work at Bayside, the inside of the lines once they've been cleaned. And what's frustrating is that was fixed, but yet on paragraph 54 of the complaint, they cite the leak at Bayside Road. Um, you know, we're talking about making repairs and going forward, and, and they're going backward. This gives you a little idea. If the, on the left side is the sewer collection system. Uh, average pipe age, 96 years, 208 miles of collection. You can see 18 miles of it's within 200 feet of the ocean, which creates some challenges for us. Five miles under the ocean at high tide. Um, eight, more than 8,000 sewer manholes. We have six sewer pumping stations. Now, some of you may not what, know what a pumping station does. Some of the public watching this we're part of the MWRA district and we're kind of the end of the line. So when the uh, sewer line, the main trunks come to Quincy, there's an awful lot of affluent already in the pipe. So in order for the, our residents to be served, we have six pump stations that literally force our storage into those lines to get out to Nut Island, which then, as you know, gets pumped underground out to Deer Island for treatment. Um, so a million dollars annually just on those operations and maintenance. We've been spending three to five million dollars annually for repairs of the system. On the drainage side, um, those average age of pipes are more than 100 years, and we've got 150 miles of drain piping. We've got more than 9,000 catch basins uh, and five stormwater pumping stations. Uh, same idea. Uh, and we spend more than a million two each year annually in maintenance and repairs to those pump stations and the system. Um, now, in fiscal 17 improvements, um, some of you may be familiar with some of these, some of the councilors uh, may have been directly involved in some meetings for them, but we've seen sewer improvements to a number of these streets. Uh, Montclair, John and Division area, which is over by the Montclair Marsh. We talked about the Bayside Beach lining, Manitab, Bayswater, and Parkhurst, uh, down on Ward 1, sewer pipe lining and lateral repairs. C Street from Manitou to Shoreside, sewer line uh, behind Broad Meadows, uh, Utica to Barber Terrace, new sewer lines. Uh, Curtis Street to Carroll Lane at Whitwell Street Park. Again, uh, relining uh, in some new laterals. Francisburg Sewers at, front, at, uh, at Black's Creek area. Uh, we actually had a couple of issues. And you can see this work being done. Uh, there was some high counts. We did some testing. We found a broken pipe and immediately went in and made repairs and replaced that section of pipe. That's down by the corner of Francisburg and Southern Artery and Marymount Parkway. You can see the little Verk uh, building on the right, uh, Verk Rentals. The other end, uh, France Brook at Quincy Shore Drive. You can see a whole new section of pipe replacing because through our 
uh, a system of TVing the lines, we have found some cracks in that pipe, so that was repaired because of the concern being right on Black's Key, Creek and have an effect on obviously on the counts of the water in Black's Creek and Quincy Bay. Uh, Black's Creek, as you know, is a, a very important uh, flood control basin that uh, helps to keep uh, West Quincy from being overburdened, as well as uh, parts of Ward 1, Lafayette, and Putnam Street. Uh, and uh, the tide, uh, tide gates of Black's Creek play a big role uh, in that. Fiscal 18 improvements. So we did work at Fayette, Farrington, from Holbrook to Brook, spot repairs and sewer pipe lining. Some of you may see those trucks out there relining uh, a number of the sewers. I, I know I saw them in Wollaston yesterday. Linden Street to Wentworth and North Quincy, sewer pipe lining and manhole ceiling. Uh, Canton Road to Gordon around Quincy Commons, excavating repair and short liners. And that's a good example. Quincy Commons, some of you may know, it's, it's an apartment complex owned by the Corcorans. It's on uh, French Street, uh, Arnold Road, and a number of those streets and around the back there. That was the old uh, milk plant for White Brothers Milk many years ago. But we're having high counts uh, on, on some of our storm drains in that area. And through a lot of uh, investigative work by the DPW, they found that under the building, the apartment building, at Quincy Commons, it was a broken sewer line. Now, it wasn't backing up into the apartment complex, so the landlord wasn't aware of it. Uh, but because of the high counts, it was migrating into the storm drains. We traced it back, traced it back, and found those. And then, of course, the landlord, we made them make the repairs uh, immediately. So things like that happen in the system uh, periodically. We're an old city with old infrastructure, and things can migrate into the system. Years ago, we did a lot of what was called the smoke testing which was uh, many years ago when a contractor was hooking a line up to the house. In some cases, they hooked up to the, to the storm drain rather than the sewer line, and I'm sure they were doing that uh, without knowledge. But uh, they do, what they do is they put the smoke in the pipes, and they watch the, the vent chimneys on the ho houses. So if the, if the smoke went into the storm drain, you see it coming up to the house, then that sewer line wasn't uh, hooked up properly. A lot of those, if not all the ones we found, were fixed and correctly tied in. So there's been an ongoing effort uh, for the last couple of decades uh, to make these repairs. So fiscal 18 improvements, we, we, we made quite a few. Uh, Avalon Beach and Bay Point in 2018, we had some issues there, they were repaired. Uh, and then of course fiscal 19 this year, currently underway, uh, we just uh, opened the bids for Newcomb Street and McGrath Highway, uh, Sharon Road, Colby Road, Faxon Road, Watkins Street and Moore Street area. At Marymount Parkway, uh, cross country means under parkland, not uh, under uh, any uh, necessarily streets with homes on them. And then the Armory Street area. Designs are underway to repair the Island Avenue and Peterson Road uh, sewers, uh, Clement Terrace and Elmwood area uh, sewers over in Montclair as well. And then with this year, we also uh, won through some hard work, uh, some low interest state loans uh, for some additional repairs, the Strand Pumping Station uh, some of you may recall during that last March, uh, literally it was March Madness in Quincy last year with the weather events, and uh, the, um, the Strand Pumping Station was overburdened because of the, the coastal waters coming over, essentially uh, flooding that out. Uh, these repairs will do some things to that station that going forward will protect it against another incident like that. Uh, and then uh, $5.6 million for a number of uh, coastal repairs and again, under that state low interest uh, loan program, uh, there's the Strand Pumping Station. Um, it's certainly been operating well since that time, but um, this will allow it to be protected. Now, over the last uh, few years, we've been, uh, as a city, it's been recognized that we make great improvements, not just in Wollaston Beach. And, and, and I'm going to remind everybody, I know some of the work councils that live on the coast, we've got beaches in various parts of the city, quite a few of them in Hausnack and Germantown. And, Adam Shaw, we have them in Squanum and, uh, as well. So um, Quincy Point, Avalon, and Mount Street. So there's a number of beaches that we, we maintain as well. And our health department, as you know, does regular testing at all these beaches as well. And we've seen a steady improvement uh, in the conditions, in the water quality. Um, is it perfect? No, it's not. Ho hopefully someday uh, we'll get there. But there's a lot of challenges to get there. In fact, uh, in 16, we were cited by a number of associations on the city's work uh, on working hard to clean up on the waterways through uh, programs with the stormwater control uh, treatment and so forth. So um, kind of a mixed opinions here. We seem to be recognized by the private industry that we're doing some great things 
going forward, making great improvements, yet the EPA has sought to uh, uh, find a way to, uh, to have the U.S. Attorney on their behalf sue the city of Quincy for polluting the waterway. So I, I, think it's, I think it's fair and important to reiterate that the city of Quincy is never dumping sewage into any of our waterways. Does some sewage find its way into the waterways through various sources from time to time? Yes, it happens. We're trying to eliminate all of those uh, times so uh, it doesn't happen. Um, and I would suggest that, as I did on Friday, that as a kid that grew up in Quincy, and I remember my mother taking us all down to Wallison Beach and uh, trying to grab a spot, uh, used to be jammed. They didn't test in those days. I would suggest that the water quality is 100 times cleaner than it was when we were kids. In fact, in those days, the Moon, Moon Island surge vats uh, were active. And as I said earlier, the Nut Island treatment plant was dumping raw surge directly into the harbor. We survived. Um, some may say there was some damage from it, I don't know, but uh, we did survive it. And I don't, I don't say that lightly. My point is we have made great progress during the last several decades on clean water for the people of our city. And I reiterate that uh, we don't, I don't need a federal bureaucrat who doesn't answer to anybody like we do to the people every couple of years to tell us that we should clean our water. We're cleaning our water. It's an important issue for the people of the city. We're a coastal community, 27 miles of coastline. We've got fishermen and lobstermen that depend livelihoods on, on the cleanliness of the water as well. So uh, I certainly resent some of that implication. Um, I also want to thank and acknowledge uh, Congressman Lynch who stood with me on Friday um, and has indicated his complete support to the city uh, to try to work through this process in the coming weeks and months ahead. So um, I'd be happy to uh, open up for questions. Um, if anybody has any questions, I do have some of the representatives of the team here that if it gets too technical, I'll certainly pass it off to them, but, uh, and certainly commit to keeping you apprised of uh, things going forward. Thank you very, <clears throat> thank you very much, Mayor. Uh, just kind of first pass going through your presentation here. I think one of the, uh, the other, um, you know, highlights, and I didn't see it in there, was the uh, reconstruction of the Quincy Point pump station, which I think was like three and a half, four million bucks. So that was, uh, you know, another, another item that we invested in. Um, you know, I had a little back and forth uh, with your representative over the weekend. Uh, the question came to me in the form of, uh, you know, one of my constituents that uh, obviously read sort of the media uh, depiction of what was presented from the EPA. And, um, you know, the question became, so they live down the Quincy Point area. Uh, they were talking specifically about uh, Avalon Beach. And believe it or not, there will be people swimming laps in there towards the end of April. So the question was, um, do I have, is there anything for me to be concerned about? Um, no. With, no? No, absolutely not. Um, as I said, from time to time, some, something happens where you get a, some crossover in the system. We track it down and fix it as soon as we possibly can. Uh, keep in mind, too, that um, you know, the storm drains uh, collect water in a storm event. Um, and things fall into the storm drain. We have a very aggressive catch uh, basin cleaning program we do on a regular basis, but you've got, uh, you've got dog feces, you've got somebody's washing the car, the chemicals washed under the storm drain. There's all kinds of potential ways for things to get into that system. It's very difficult for the city to monitor uh, that, that closely for every storm drain, more than 9,000 of them catch basins across the city. So I remind people and encourage people in neighborhoods to be, be aware of that when they're, when they're I can I, I remember uh, as kids would see people changing their oil over the storm drain. Thank God, I think we've come a long way from those days. But um, you know, people have to be cognizant out in the neighborhoods. But you know, there's there's bird waste, there's dog waste, there's other things that get into the system that is not necessarily controlled by the city. But uh, all the improvements we continue to make um, are important. We're going to continue to do that, and I think uh, we've it's been about six to eight million dollars a year. This year, we're poised to spend ten million. Uh, on sewer and drain improvements across the city, uh, which is all going to result, I think, in, in better water quality. Thank you for answering the question. Um, Council DeBona, then Council McCarthy. Thank you, thank you. Mr. President. Um, Mayor, thank you for coming in and, and discussing this tonight. Um, a lot of the public had some questions and concerns. I know you had a press conference right um, on Friday, which was very, very helpful, and you're, you're following it up tonight. So. Um, you're not shying away from it at all by coming out here, so thank you for that. I, I, you know, just looking back here, at reading the Patriot Ledger article talking about going back to 2009 
and then coming into 2018 here. They say that the fines are, um, or the violations are, before November 2nd of 2015 is 37,500, and then after that it's 54,833. Now, have we had any violations, or have they been fining us yet? Or what's there's, been no, there's been no fines enforced. Um, that's, that's a point of leverage that they've been using. Um, and, uh, you know, my, my argument um, uh, on, from this side of the street is that, look, we've, we've been making six to eight million dollars worth of improvements every year. We're doing all the right things. We have not been ignoring this issue. Um, for me to pay a fine would be acknowledgement we're doing something wrong. There's been no intention of, 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 of dumping of any storage in, in our waterways. Um, so that that's, gets very disappointing uh, mm -hmm. that the U.S. Attorney uses that kind of leverage. Um, you know, I'll stop there. So have they given us a violation at all? And have they fined us yet? Or this is it's just been, a there's been no fine yet. Okay. It's been on the table as far as the discussions go. Uh, when we were looking at trying to work through the talks about what kind of improvements we would make, and one of the things we su suggested was instead of a fine, why don't we use that money to do some more of the improvements? Um, sure. So I thought we were making some pretty good progress based on my team reports. I didn't sit on in the meetings directly. Uh, they were led by, by our team, legal and engineering team. So representatives for the EPA that were there, as well as the assistant uh, U.S. attorney who was handling the case for the EPA. Uh, and, uh, you know, there was a lot of good discussion, engineering talk, uh, about further improvements that we're going to make. But uh, there doesn't seem to be any acknowledgement by the agency of all the improvements that we have made, um, which is, again, disappointing, discouraging. <laughs> We did our capital improvement plan. Not only did we do roads, we also did sewer maintenance repairs, and that was huge that we appropriate. I was happy to be a part of appropriating that funding because I think we need to be proactive um, and, and mitigate a lot of these issues. You know, looking forward to, um, obviously, this is going to be a situation where there's going to be attorneys involved. And uh, Is there going to be any legal fees, attorney costs? Do you foresee or anticipate how much that's going to cost? For us, the, the city of Quincy? Not at this point. I mean, it's part of the legal budget uh, for the legal law department, I should say. Um, you know, we have professional services there, outside contract. We've been paying uh, lawyers from Goulson and Soares, stores who are specialized in environmental issues. Um, they've been at the table. They've been working with us and guiding us. We've been paying those bills along the way. Do you anticipate it, 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 it going out a little further? How, how long do you think this will, this will take, this whole scenario or issue? I don't know. At, at this point, the, um, it's been assigned to a magistrate judge, uh, and I'm assuming at some point we'll be hearing from them, and uh, that judge will be uh, asking the parties to come together and try to come to some resolution, which we're committed to doing. Uh, there's no question. Uh, we all want, um, obviously, better, better quality of water. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's interesting because the, yeah. the EPA seems to have a tight timetable on this side of the street, Yet, uh, you know, we applied for permits to replace the tide gates at Black's Creek mm -hmm. uh, more than five years ago. Think about that, more than five years ago. Now, these tide gates that we have in place, we have to close them at dead low tide. That's the only time you can close them and open them. Therefore, they have to be closed longer than you probably would like them to be closed. We want to replace them with tide gates that can close and open at any time during a storm event, uh, which then allows you to um, have less closures and allow for the health of the marsh to improve. Uh, but we also know what happens when we have a major storm event and those tide gates aren't closed properly. Look what happened with Putnam Street and Lafayette. Some 50 homes were affected. Uh, and, and one of the bureaucrats said, we really don't care. Those houses shouldn't have been built there. That's the response you get from some of these bureaucrats. Uh, you know, it, that sh there should be no gates there. The water should just run through. Uh, well, that was the case. We're going to have a lot of issues with a lot of our neighborhoods. So there's got to be a balance, flood control and responsibility to the environment. So five years in a permitting process, it's okay for them to hold us up. But women not meeting a schedule on this side of the street in their mind are in their view. Uh, so we're, we're contemplating countersuing uh, on that issue. Um, th that's all the questions that I have. I, th I appreciate you coming in tonight, Mayor, and, and, and speaking about this in the public because a lot of the, the questions have been answered tonight, and I know we'll foresee future um, situation. But thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor McCarthy. Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Councilor. Um, just a couple of comments and a quick question. Uh, you know, some of these 
specific claims in Quincy are pretty broad. As you said, Weymouth, Fort River, they probably could have listed the Atlantic Ocean if they wanted to. Um, but particularly, they picked on Bayside Road and Squanum. Were there any other locations that were cited specifically? Well, you get into the, uh, they don't tell you when um, they come out and they test certain areas. Um, as I said, our health department does regular testing along the beach areas, along outfall areas. So in their testing, they found uh, spikes at different times. Um, again, when you get into the outfall areas, right. it gets very challenging and difficult to find the source of that. We continue to do that with the programs we have. We continue to inspect our sore lines with TV cameras. We, uh, we're always looking for those sources to, uh, to get rid of them, obviously. Um, the Bayside was a direct pipe broken right by the water uh, that was seeping into the ocean. That was what we moved quickly and got that repaired. Um, so yeah, there are a number of those uh, examples, mm -hmm. Councilor. No, and, and, and after last year, uh, I got very familiar with outfall pipes. And um, one of the items that I think that just jumped right to me when this came out on Friday was how much this administration has done on infrastructure. Um, and specifically, a lot of infrastructure in regards to sewer lines and outfall pipes. The seawall project, which has a lot of outfall pipes that run along C Street all the way up into Marymount, <clears throat> constantly... Um, my connection with um, Al Grazioso and DPW and Paul Costello, uh, constantly talking to them and how much work has been put in. Uh, you, you bring up the old story about the Nut Island treatment plant and um, back in the day when they didn't care and, and it just went out into the out into West Way off of Paddox Island. And um, Who was the EPA in those days, Dave? Yeah. Uh, and I know everybody jumped in, feds, the state, and the city, and the water out there is beautiful now. Um, it's quite a change. When I was down there, um, it wasn't so beautiful. There was uh, discoloration. You can see it when you're out boating, blue to brown, and uh, it was pretty bad. Uh, so uh, uh, I know the work that uh, you folks and, and administrations before you mm -hmm. have attempted uh, uh, with Quincy, and it's just a, um, it's a community that is... Uh, on the coast in a community that probably like, you could probably list many other communities that uh, probably don't do as much due diligence as we do. Um, for a city this size, we keep a good eye on a lot of the activities, outfall pipes and what goes in those pipes and there's survey after survey that I know that goes on the DPW. So um, you have my support. Um, throughout this whole thing, because I've, I've, I've seen what the DPW and you folks have done over the last two years before I was on the, on the council. I saw the improvements that were thrown into place. I, I was just quickly making notes on some of the Ward 1 locations, but all the locations in general, uh, to try to write it. And um, it's only been one way. We've, we've just been going up. No one's backed off of this ever um, over the course of more than the last decade. Um, so, um, yeah, my support and uh, whatever I can do to help. Uh, I know that the city uh, has done its homework and uh, is not uh, negligent at all. Thank you, Thank Councilor. You. Thank you, Councilor. Any, uh, any other Councilors, questions, thoughts for the Council Palmucci? Is that a, a okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, when did the when did the tolling agreement go into effect, roughly? Uh, we started about a year and a half ago in discussions, so the tolling agreement probably started that at that time. It ended on Friday. And that was a and that was a complaint that they brought against us prior to entering into the tolling agreement, relatively soon prior to entering into. Yeah, the they, they raised a number of issues with us. Yes. So it's uh, fair to say that we've used that as a blueprint moving forward as to what uh, they identified as violations of the uh, Clean Waters Protection Act in order, to, in order to move forward with making repairs and remediation work? I think there's been more agreement at the table than disagreement. Okay. But we've been, this is a complaint that didn't come out on Friday. This is a complaint that was essentially revived on Friday from several years ago, right? 
Well, it went from discussion to a lawsuit right. on Friday. But all of the, the items that they were, that they raised in the lawsuit were items that they had made us aware of in the years prior, right? Uh, I don't no. know, I I don't know about all of them, but I certainly know that some of the issues that we talked about along the way were taken care of. Right. Uh, and there was no appetite from the EPA to hear about all the things we had been doing on the improvement side. Um, Beyond what they were correct. raising. Correct. So it was, I haven't reviewed the, the complaint specifically, but um, there's the, the list of items that they say are violations. There are ones we've addressed, like the one you pointed out, I believe, on Friday, and you've yeah, for example, it was the, tonight. That it's they're interested in fixed. 200 feet within the waterway. Well, our storm drains go back far, far uh, longer than that. So the stuff, as I gave some descriptions about examples, like French Street, it gets into the system that eventually gets into the, the outfalls. So all the work we do further back has a great impact on it as well. They don't seem to want to recognize that. And that's not a part of the discussion that we've been having. With, well, it's a part of what we're saying to them, but not a part of what they're taking into consideration with the, with the filing of the complaint. Okay. And I, I, the reason why I'm asking the question is I'm just trying to get a better sense of kind of our engagement with um, the federal agencies involved. So obviously, the, this body hasn't been, the administration is appropriately so. Um, but in terms of identifying what work needs to be done and what work uh, is prioritized in the city moving forward, does this change that determination that you make in any way? I, th I think the, uh, well, the, the problem at the table has been the amount of work and the cost of that work going forward is very aggressive, very aggressive. And uh, you know, we, we've had a very balanced approach to this over the years, both from the sewer water budget on sewer repairs, but also on the drain budget on the city side, also our sewer rehab fund from developers and constantly uh, doing rehab and improvements. Um, uh, they wanna go far, far further than that. I don't have a dollar amount, but it's in the tens of millions. And I suppose I'd, I don't want you to answer this question publicly, but I wonder what effect this has on the priorities that we as a city will undertake moving forward in this. Um, I don't want you to answer that because I want it to be used against us later on, but I would think that. What I can say, Councilor, is I believe it's in the best interest that we have control over the improvements, that I don't want to give that control up to a federal agency. Right, no, I understand that, and, it, and it's kind of what I'm driving at too, is that you know, knowing what they've identified as issues, having that, and then also, from a perspective, a global perspective here in the city, citywide, not just addressing those, addressing those in part, but also the, the, the issues that uh, germinate throughout the city mm -hmm. to try and upgrade the infrastructure. And I, I guess my fear, just to speak, you know, my fear or my worry would be that we only cater to the list that they have come up with. Um, and that that becomes our priority rather than, I think the approach that we've had, um, as the administration's had, that the city's taken to upgrading the problematic areas throughout the entire system and not just the specified areas that have been identified by uh, the federal agencies. You know, I, I concur with that. I mean, just knowing about the process that we've gone through with, you know, and flood, obviously, been more involved in flood mitigation uh, and, and storm water um, than the sewage, uh, but just knowing the difficulties we've had with the federal government in terms of, of permitting and trying to apply common sense to some of the, the regulations um, when we're trying to make improvements. You know, not just there, I guess it applies to you know, Quincy Center as well, some of the, the issues that we've had with jumping through um, hoops to try and make progress in the city. Uh, what's, the, what's the next steps so w with this? Now that this has happened, you said you're contemplating and you'll make that determination with the attorneys as whether or not the city will counter sue. Um, but beyond that, what is, the, what is the next step with them and our interaction with them? Well, I've, I've instructed uh, my solicitor to prepare for the counter suit uh, on that issue. Um, and uh, we will be hearing, I assume, from 
uh, the judge magistrate on getting together uh, both parties and setting a schedule going forward. We have not heard that yet. And so are we no longer, now that they filed this, when the tolling, immediately when the tolling agreement lapses, does that, we're not in the room, I'm not in the room. I don't know what these discussions are like and what the groups are like, but is it more adversarial now that they filed it? Do we go from sitting at the table and talking about uh, mutually how to make things better and what their priorities are and what, what our objectives are? Um, does it go to just, we're gonna fix what we're gonna fix and we're just gonna fight it out in litigation in terms of the stuff that they want us to fix? Well, I, I think there was an you know honest uh, attempt by both sides on the engineering side of it. Um, uh, I'm not so sure the representative of the U.S. Attorney's Office was as interested in, in getting to that point of a settlement. So will our engineering folks continue to speak to their engineering folks to try and move forward, or does that end now with this? Well, it, it, that will happen as the judge magistrate instructs, instructs both teams uh, to get together. Other than that, I, I think we're probably restricted from from doing that. Um, you know, it, it's, it's my hope that we can settle this out, that uh, this doesn't result in um, continual adversarial relationship with the federal government. Um, you know, I think with the congressman working on our behalf, as well as uh, a reasonable magistrate, I think that we'll be able to figure this all out. I th that's one of the, I think, the, uh, identifiable downsides is that, you know, then the, the cooperative, <coughs> kind of um, engagement with the federal authorities then ceases because now we're fighting with them, right? You know, we're in litigation. I've never been in litigation with, I've seen two parties who are in litigation work cooperatively. I mean, and usually litigation comes when the ability to work cooperatively to settle any differences is, is gone. Um, so it's, it's disappointing that clearly they felt that we were at that point mutually, that we're at that point and could no longer work together cooperatively and that they took this action. So I hope we'll, and I trust that we'll continue to do what yeah, we need to there's do There's a to couple of other waterways. legal aspects of this that uh, defer to Mr. Timmons on, that along the way, uh, the United States Attorney General had issued a memo to the um, you know, Department of Justice on these kinds of cases. Um, so, you know, we thought that things would go in a different direction. Um, there's also a case from Hawaii going before the Supreme Court um, about uh, this whole issue of water quality of, is the Clean Act really apply also to those issues of storm, uh, storm drain systems where stuff falls in. It's not intentional, it's not emanating from the soil line, but uh, so th there's a, other things happening at that level that uh, I think may uh, help us as we go forward. And there's some favorable case law on that as well as when, when it was interpreted relative to um um, to, to groundwater, that the, the, it was originally applied, the Clean Waters Act was originally applied to groundwater and seepage that came through uh, groundwater and, and the feds in an action got smacked down saying, no, it's, that's an overextension of what, uh, of what the act covers. So uh, it would be interesting to see how that works out. Um, lastly, just uh, do we, should we uh, be planning for any type of financial uh, calamity in terms of fines from this lawsuit, or is it too early to tell? I, I think that? it's way early to uh, to get into that. <clears throat> I really do. Um, Typically, do the do the fines go back towards the projects, or are they literally just punitive? You know, well, if it, we this, get fined a million dollars, is it a been, million dollars put into something? This, or there's been settlements over the years where uh, it's redirected to projects, although on many of the um, cases, they do collect some sort of a fine, whether the dollar amount may be, varies from different communities. Okay. All right, well, thank you. And I look forward to, to the administration keeping us up to date, you know, even just by way of a letter from Mr. Timmons that comes out peri periodically about how this is progressing so that... Um, Gladly do that, and I'd also say the reverse. If you have some yeah. questions that you want to talk to City Solicitor Direct about, which probably isn't uh, best to do it in the public realm right now because we're in the rhythm of a suit. Uh, feel free to do that as well. Well, thank you for coming and providing information to us tonight. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Council. Council Mahoney. Hi, Mayor. How are you? Good. So thank you for coming out. I'm sure this isn't what you were planning on doing on maybe last Thursday for your Monday night. Um, 
So I do have a couple of questions. And um, so the EPA, and you've kind of mentioned them along the way, the EPA and the city of Quincy um, were working back and forth together. You said that, I'm not sure of the terminology. Is it tolling or is it a tolling agreement that you had? Yes, once the, once the issues uh, were brought to the city's attention, we sat down and both sides agreed on a tolling agreement, which mm -hmm. means we'll keep working at the issue. Mm -hmm. Were there any extensions that the city had been granted or asked and, and on Friday? I mean, and how many? We did requested we an extension. One or uh, how many? Was there one prior to this, Jim, or is this the, was this the first extension? Would this have been the first extension? No, we had already granted one, and we had told them we granted one. So they granted us one when, at three. We granted them one. Okay, and then we requested one in return. Granted, Jim, you want to step up? I'm sorry. Sure. So we granted the EPA one. I'm just, I'm just trying to piece right. to, together an understanding. Just to be clear, the way the tolling agreement works, mm -hmm. um, some of the claims go back to 2009. There's a statute of limitations on them. And once that runs, we're no longer subject to fines. Well, some of the biggest concerns that the EPA had um, are from long ago. And we've done a lot of uh, remedial work, as Council McCarthy was discussing. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the current climate is that they didn't have a lot to talk about, but they did have some older events. Older and than so 2000. They were telling us that our discussions were going to have to come to an end at a certain point because they had to bring a suit in order to preserve those older events. Well, we told them, look, we're trying to work this out with you. Mm -hmm. We will grant to you, we'll agree to a tolling agreement. Um, and what that does is we waive our rights under the statute of limitations. We waive the right to raise that defense. You, you kind of toll, you stop time for a while while you continue to talk. So we did that back in 2016. Um, the period um, expired or was coming up for expiration the beginning of uh, last year at some point. I forget all the dates, but we granted another one for a longer period of time, and um, <clears throat> that was ending this past Friday. Well, in December, we sent a letter to the U.S. Attorney um, talking about some concerns we had and indicating that we were willing to again extend the tolling agreement um, but then you may recall the federal shutdown and a couple of other little dynamics entered into the picture where there was no communication for a while from their end. So the tolling agreement was coming up on March 15th, and I'm not sure what happened on their end, but they never asked us to extend it again. And we had told them we would and were interested in doing so. So when we said we would, was it because we were looking for the extension or we were offering the EPA the extension? We were always granting them. We were never looking for an extension, so, per so se. That's where, so that's it was something they needed, not, not, the, uh, not the city. So when we had all these issues, and this is, again, I'm just trying to understand this. So when the EPA was um, coming to Quincy with, um, or there were complaints, however, they, however that happens, complaints go to the EPA, they come out and investigate, they sit down with the city. Did they, was there ever a time that we sat down and we had a, a consent agreement that we would kind of work towards so we could check off the boxes of the things that we had to fix, much of the things that you have in here? Was that something that we worked on where we kind of identified the issues and created an agreement with them so that we could, other than the tolling agreement, which I understand it goes back to things that were passed, the time, time frame was changing because you wouldn't be able to, you'd run out of time to be able to bring them up. So the things yeah. specifically that are in here, we don't have the EPA um, report that we mentioned page 54 on. It would be helpful if the council could have that too, just so we could see it. I'm sure it's great reading. Um, but I'm just curious, um, was there, did we ever have a, an agreement between the EPA and the city of Quincy of the things that we were gonna do so that we could kind of check off the boxes as we went? Well, there weren't check off boxes per se, but there was a pretty extensive um, consent decree that they had proposed to us initially and it went through several iterations. Mm -hmm. It's a 60 plus page document mm -hmm. and it's been negotiated over a prolonged period of time. So that was never signed? We never agreed to any of that? Right, we got down to a certain point where there were particular issues that we just couldn't bridge the gaps on. Okay, so turning back to the city of Quincy, just out of curiosity, um, and I'm new with the council, but um, not anymore, I guess I can't, I can't say that anymore, can I? Well, I guess I can say it until I run again. Um, so did we ever do a comprehensive study, a full comprehensive study, not just 
like when we talk about specific things that are in this packet, this PowerPoint, but a full comprehensive study of the full city, all the sore lines, so that we, I know we know how many miles we have and we know how old they are, but a full comprehensive study so that we know which ones have to be attacked first and a plan for when we're going to replace those sore lines that potentially could have cracks or damages in them. I'll have the engineers come up and answer that, because yes, that's what a lot of this is. Yep. And that was part of what was discussed. But before they do, I just want to, one of the big sticking points that we had a problem with was that the EPA was limiting its scope of work to um, issues within 200 feet of the coastline. Mm -hmm. They wanted us to spend all our time and money on sites within that 200 foot boundary. We were telling them no, that that's not cost efficient and it doesn't fit an appropriate priority scale for Quincy because of, as the mayor said, things like the brooks mm -hmm. and, and other tributaries that run toward the ocean. Um, Mr. Shea can explain this. Um, we have two engineers here tonight, actually. But um, we were talking about a very comprehensive plan that was citywide and structured, mm -hmm. and they wanted something that was a little different. And that was another major reason why these talks broke down. Their narrow focus under the Clean Water Act is right along the coastline. Mm -hmm. And we're saying, we want to fix stuff that's getting into Furnace Brook, you know, further upstream, because that's just as, just as big an issue. Mm -hmm. So why don't you take that? Um, good evening, I'm Joseph Shea. I'm a senior principal with Wooded and Current, an engineering firm that's been working with the city on wastewater matters um, citywide. Uh, with respect to a comprehensive study, the city has taken several steps in the last four years. Um, the city has modeled their complete sewer system and done what's called a consequence of failure analysis and a likelihood of failure analysis. So those are really technical jargon titles, uh, but what they are is looking at all of the sewer pipes within the city over a certain diameter and modeling that if some of these sewers were to back up and break, which ones would have the most dire consequences? Mm -hmm. those, those, the outcome of that study, which is one of these reports that you see here, uh, is not necessarily within 200 feet of the coastline. There could be challenges in the hills of West Quincy that are very important and we need to make sure we understand them. There could be challenges inland or in the flat components uh, over in Montclair, for example, the, the really flat areas near the bog. So there were citywide models that were done, and then out of the, that modeling and the outcome of those reports, 20% of the sewer system has been evaluated in the last three years by smoke testing, doing TV camera inspection work, uh, going into some houses and flushing dye down the toilets for connectivity. Uh, so when it comes to the word comprehensive, Citywide modeling has been done, looking at all of the piping, and then 20% of the city has been completed with very thorough, detailed investigation. And on the current schedule, we're looking to do another 20% in year 2020. Mm -hmm. Roughly every three years, we're trying to get through 20% of the city with TV inspection, smoke testing, dye testing, um, some of those those very much uh, detailed activities, in some cases, it's almost going house to house to determine connectivity. So we have 20% of the whole city done, but we have a map of all the sewers in the we city. We have a, a map and a model of all of the sewers, the okay. 200 plus miles. And when we do this comprehensive study and we work with the engineers and we have issues with the EPA, do you look at the, do you look at the things that the EPA are coming to us with and then also do a recommendation or a study for uh, mitigation for those types of areas that, they're, that the complaints are coming in on. Because those are complaints, typically the EPA is not just going to cities and towns on their own. They're coming to city and towns because of phone calls from, or re complaints sometimes, yes, sometimes they are, um, from, I'm getting my, the head's being checked, no. Um, I realize they do check things in, in all environments, but when they come out and do extensive studies of those specific areas, sometimes it's because of those things. And in 2011, I can remember um, many complaints going in to the EPA regarding the town brook and lots of issues that were being brought up about things. I'm not, and I think there's some of that stuff was answered in here. I'm, this, I'm not here trying to cause any problems. I'm just 
trying to say that there's many reasons why the EPA would come out. And that study, that, that report, would be very helpful for us here on the council to see what the issues are. The other thing is, I just had a, out of curiosity, when we mentioned the cities and towns, just to, just to go back, because I don't want to go too deep. I just, I just, I think that there's, you know, there's, um, there is some um, validity in, in, in checking these things, and, and it builds trust to be able to, to see those things too. But this is, this isn't, you know, it's a, it's a big deal when you go from the EPA to the Department of Justice. This is a big. This is a big step. Um, and when we talk about counter sewing, it makes me a little bit anxious because I would think that we would try to try to work something out, which is, sounds like that's our first step of action, not completely jumping down to counter sewing. When asking for a comprehensive study, we only have 20% of our city completed right now, and it was just done in the last four years. This has been going on for since 2009. It sounds like we've been having regular complaints. Um, it sounds like, and that's what I'm hearing. Um, so. My question too is: When we talked about other communities in Massachusetts facing similar issues, are they are they fa facing similar issues from the DO, the Department of Justice, or similar issues from the EPA? Um, which are they? Are they under the same scrutiny as Quincy is right now from the Department of Justice? We listed Boston, Saugus, Revere, Lowell, Lawrence, and Fitchburg. I, the you want to speak to that, Mayor. Uh, I would su suggest it's a combination, uh -huh. um, and a number of them sign consent decrees. Uh, and uh, paid a fine. Um, I believe that we have been in a place of doing incredible proactive work on this issue. We have had not ignored it, mm -hmm. where I think some communities may have not made some investment into the systems. Each case is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, every case is different. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, some of them are inland and deal with rivers and so forth. But we have been proactive for the last few decades on this issue. Um, and I think it's important to remind uh, people that it was the city of Quincy that sued the state uh, over the whole issue of polluting Quincy Bay. Uh, it wasn't a result of an EPA action. It was a result of the people of Quincy tired of uh, the state with 23 communities dumping raw surge into Quincy Bay. Uh -huh. That's dumping surge into Quincy Bay. Um, so when we talk about these other examples, I want to make sure it's clear to, to folks out there that a number of communities in the Commonwealth the Massachusetts have had dealings with the EPA in this issue. Some have signed consent decrees, which then commits them to an aggressive program. Uh -huh. I, I suggested uh, that in, in all our discussions that we have been very proactive. We've got a lot of work done in this city that uh, I am not going to uh, submit the city to a fine, which suggests that we're doing something wrong. Um, maybe from the opinion of the EPA, we should be more aggressive with financing it, but we've We've been pretty steady on this for several years. Uh, this administration, the prior administrations on this issue. So we've made great progress. And if you look at, uh, we're, you know, we'll make any and all information avail available to you as we have to the EPA right along. Uh, but our testing over the years in the waters has shown a steady improvement in the water quality. Yet um, the city doesn't seem to get any credit for that. So, uh, and the issue, look, if this could be fixed, Somebody showed me that there's a $40 million fix. We'd do it tomorrow. Um, it's not that simple. It's complicated. The systems are complicated and old and comprehensive. Um, and there's all kinds of potential sources that migrate into the storm drain system. So it's a challenging issue. But I think we've been uh, as um, proactive on this issue as any community in the Commonwealth. Again, it's it's not. It, I, I'm specific. I, I'm I'm talking about something that I don't have in front of me. I don't have the EP. I don't have the report that you have that you're talking about. I know what you've done, but I don't know what their specific complaints are. So it's hard to say. And when we ask for a comprehensive study that the city has done, we've done a comprehensive study for the mapping of the city, but we've only done 20% of our shoreline. So it's hard to say that you know we that we could could even say whether or not we know the areas that they're, I don't know what they're. I don't have the report in front of me. So I, it's just questions that I that I'm trying to understand. I don't disagree that the city has tried to do things, but it's not something that's new and it's not something that we didn't know about. We know the EPA has been having issues over the course of at least the last decade, longer. It's not, it's not just that. But to go to the Department of Justice, that's a giant leap from, you know, from, from just working with the EPA to something there's a I respectfully disconnect. disagree. The, the U.S. Attorney's Office is the arm, the arm for the federal government, the legal arm, just as a Solicitor's office is for the departments of the city, so I, I don't find it as quite alarming. But 
I understand where you're coming from. Well, you might not find it very alarming, but I think the residents of the city of Quincy will because it's going to be something that's going to be, it could, if we're going to counter, so it could be something that's going to be very, very expensive. I'm just concerned about what we're doing and how we're going to go about it. I'm sure there's a plan, and I look forward to hearing the updates as we go along. However, you know, when I'm looking at these, some of the things that we're talking about, and you're only specifying page 54 of a report with one thing, and these are all the other things that you've done, that's great, but it may not be the things that the EPA were looking for. And again, other communities may have, have gone into that consent agreement. And in the long run, it, it, I don't know. I, I can't say whether or not that was something that Quincy should or shouldn't, done, shouldn't have done. But you know, potentially, it could be very costly going forward because of, of you know, the conversations that have to happen and potentially if we're going to go into a countersuit. So I would hope, I hope, and well, we'll share that. We'll share all that information and yeah. get the report to right. you. And the, the, the site on, on that 54 was to show you an example. That was a direct mm -hmm. surge leakage into the bay. Yep. And that was immediately handled once, once we were made aware of it. So um, it's and I'm sure there's other beyond examples. those, it's, it's, it's not that simple. That's why we're talking about all this testing and relining uh, all across the city because of the amount of ways that things can migrate into our storm uh, drain system. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and the only way to solve it all would be to build a treatments facilities uh, for stormwater. Uh, and that would be in the hundreds of millions. Storm water. So, I mean, I, I think there's two different things. We have drains, we have two different, ours are separate, right? So the sores, the sore lines are separate from the, the drain lines. Is that That's correct? That's correct. So we, we seem to be combining those two right now, and there seems to be a specific sore. Storage is what we're talking about. What However, I'm saying is, I, we you have two, you have a lot of utilities underground. You have a sewer line. So if that sewer line is leaking somewhere, and it, it can migrate into the storm drain system, it can, yes. And then it follows its way to the water. That's my point. We have two separate systems. Mm -hmm. That example on French Street was a great example. Mm -hmm. You know, we had a sewer break on private property. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't backing up into the private property, so nobody knew about it until the the numbers started to pop and, and the investigative work that was done. So. Uh, we could probably bring the water and sewer up here, and we could spend a few hours on a number of those locations and all the improvements that we've made uh, over the years. The smoke testing goes back to the, to the 90s. Um, the, made, the first major investment was Quincy Shore Drive uh, and Channing and all the streets off of Quincy Shore Drive uh, to help alleviate some of those uh, illicit connections or, or some of the seepage that gets into the storm drain system. So it's. Well, then I would imagine that if we went back to the 90s for that, then I would imagine that our engineering firm took that into consideration when they were doing the comprehensive study to be able to say that those lines are potentially um, um, secure because if they were replaced and you weren't doing the smoke testing. But my point is, is that we've got 20 percent. We don't have a comprehensive. We have a comprehensive you know, mapping, but again, I'll go back to the comprehensive plan that we don't have that completely done. That, it's just a concern I have because it, it, that's, that's a, a small portion of our city. So. No, I, I, uh, I appreciate that, um, and if it was, uh, if this issue was that simple to solve, we would have solved it a long time ago. Um, even if uh, once your testing is done, again, the system is old, um, there could be a break in a line after, we, after it was done last week. Absolutely. Uh, that could happen and migrate into I'm the not, system. So there's all kinds of potential no, uh, sources and how they make their way into the system, uh, and we're trying to alleviate uh, all of those that we find. Uh, and we're trying to do best practices going forward as a city and encourage, encouraging all the people of the city best practices, people, particularly people that live around a storm drain, to keep an eye on it. No, I agree. I mean, I, over in Rice Road, we were doing some work over Rice Road, and we didn't, we, we, I think our, through traffic that was going down that road, we cracked a pipe ourselves. So it can easily happen. New lines don't mean perfect, and it doesn't mean that they're, they're done correctly. You, I mean, you can put pipes in anywhere. If it's not, if it's not done correctly, they're certainly not going to hold. I understand that. But what I'm suggesting is the comprehensive study and then also the maintenance of being able to take care of those new pipes once you put them in to make sure that we're, you know, we're, we're doing what we said in our due diligence to be able to maintain the structure of those. It's not just putting something new and it's also making sure that you have a maintenance plan on how you're going to be able to take care of those things. Things. It's not an easy task by any means. I'm not suggesting that. This is an old city, as we've always said, and underground work is not pretty and it's not glamorous, but it does have to be taken care of. I'm concerned. We, um, we like to talk about our 27 miles of coastline. I think it's beautiful as well. Um, and we're being, um, it's, it's a suit that's being brought to us by the Department of Justice. This is big stuff, and I don't, I don't want to make light of it. And I'm certainly not saying that we're not going to do our due diligence to do it, to, to make sure that we protect the city of Quincy. However, it's, I, I, just, I just 
am concerned about it. So I'm raising these issues because it's, you know, a, 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 a counter conversation would be that we have a comprehensive plan, we have a maintenance plan, this is what we're doing, and this is how we can prevent, prevent, and I'm not saying that we're not. This is how we can proactively present ourselves. So it's just, it's just my- I think we're on the same page. <clears throat> That's it? I think we're on the same page. I think we are, hopefully we are. Do I start, Councilor? Mm -hmm. Um, any other questions for the mayor or the engineering team? Um, mayor, I just also kind of want to say publicly, obviously this became, at least to the public, some sort of breaking news late day Friday, uh, which prompted me as your representative on the city council to reach out to your office. And I appreciate you guys, you know, putting together what you did and, you know, coming ready to, uh, to give a presentation to the, to the council tonight. I know, um, obviously it's not a conversation that, uh, how do I say it? It's not the most comfortable conversation at the time. So I appreciate you kind of, you know, right, coming to the podium yourself to, to handle the, the Q&A. And, um, you know, my intention in doing this, quite frankly, was to, uh, to establish a line of communication. So hopefully, and I heard it shared here this evening, that uh, the conversation ensues once we all leave the council chamber. I know we have a, uh, you know, multiple departments here this evening that always make themselves available to, uh, to answer any questions, but also uh, invite any dialogue. So um, assuming that uh, this will continue and just want to thank you and team again. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, members of the council. Okay, we are still on communications of reports and uh, Mr. Clerk has a couple. Yep. Mr. Clerk. Yep. Thank you, Mr. President. We have a, uh, a letter here in supporting documents from Gary McCann policy consultant for MICDI, thanking the City Council and Council Harris on the approval of 2019-045, a resolve seeking testimony from Native American organizations regarding preservation of Indian burial grounds on Long Island and inviting them to April 1st Environmental and Public Health Committee hearing. Thank you. Does that conclude your communication? Uh, some traffic, sir. We also have a few traffics here. Ward 4, Council Palmucci add handicap parking at 75 Independence Ave. Ward 6, Council Harris, add do not enter on Hodges Ave, intersecting with East Guantanamo Street from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m., 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. school days. Ward 6, Council Harris, add no left turn on East Guantanamo Street westbound, intersecting with Hodges Ave from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m., 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. school days. Ward 6, Council Harris, add no right turn on East Guantanamo Street eastbound, intersecting with Hodges Ave from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m., 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. school days. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Any other reports? Seeing none. Uh, unfinished business from preceding meetings. Seeing none. Uh, reports of committees and Councilor Liang from the Ordinance Committee. Thank Councilor. you. I just have a couple of traffics here. Um, so the first is from Ward 1. It's 2019 047 at Handicap Parking at 81 Taffrail Road. I move positive recommendation. Motion made by Councilor Liang, second by Council McCarthy. Any discussion? Madam, uh, excuse me, Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor DeBona? Yes. Councilor Harris? Yes. Councilor Hughes? Councilor Liang? Yes. Councilor Mahoney? Yes. Councilor McCarthy? Yes. Councilor Palmucci? Yes. President Kroll? Yes. Eight members. Okay, the next is in Ward 4. It's 2019 048. Yeah, I hate. No, this is sorry, this is Ward 4. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No. She's going to read it. Okay. That's fine too. All right, so add handicap parking at 92 Ren Terrace. I move positive recommendation. Motion made by Councilor Liang, second by Councilor Mahoney. Any discussion? Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Kane? Yes. Councilor Bona? Yes. Councilor Harris? Yes. Councilor Hughes? Councilor Liang? Yes. Councilor Mahoney? Yes. Councilor McCarthy? Yes. Councilor Palmucci? Yes. President Kroll? Yes. Eight members. Thank you. And the last four are just in Ward 6. The first is 2019-049. Add two hour parking on the north side of Spruce Street, Hancock Street to Oak Avenue. I move positive recommendation. Motion made by Councilor Liang, second by Councilor Harris. Any discussion? Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Kane? Yes. Council De Bono. Yes. Council Harris. Yes. Council Hughes. Council Liang. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Palmucci. Yes. President Crow. Yes. He remembers the item passes. In 2019-050, add two-hour parking on the west side of Birch Street, Hollis Ave to Glover Avenue. I move positive recommendation. Yes. Motion made by Council Liang, second by Council Harris. Any discussion? Seeing none. Mr. Clerk. Council Kane. Yes. Council De Bono. Yes. Council Harris. Yes. Council Hughes. Council Liang. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Palmucci. Yes. President Kroll. Yes. A member of the item.
passes. Okay, 2019 51, add two hour parking on the south side of Hollis Avenue, Hancock Street to Fax and Rota, and move positive recommendation. Motion made by Council Yang, second by Council Harris. Any discussion? Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Council Kane. Yes. Council Bona. Yes. Council Harris. Yes. Council Hughes. Council Lee Yang. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Palmucci. Yes. President Crow. Yes. Okay, last one, 2019-052, add no parking on the north side of Hollis Avenue, Hancock Street to Fax and Route. I move positive recommendation. Motion made by Council Yang, second by Council Harris. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Council Kane. Yes. Council DeBona. Yes. Council Harris. Yes. Council Hughes. Council Lee Yang. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Palmucci. Yes. President Crow. Yes. The members, the item passes. That's it. Oh, thank you, Councilor. Thank Any you. other reports of committees? When we schedule meetings, yep. Huh? When we schedule, no, at the end, yep. Um, presentations of petitions, memorials, and remonstrances. Council DeBar? Huh? Yeah, Council Kane. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I just wanted to uh, recognize the Quincy Fire Department and the Police Departments for. Uh, it, we had a terrible fire in Ward 3 on Newport Ave. Uh, and unfortunately, that's, this property has had significant trouble in the past and, um, you know, uh, terrible losses for the families that have lived and are now seeking other places to accommodate uh, for their living situations. But uh, I do want to thank the Quincy Fire Department and the Police Department for their diligence in taking care of this. Uh, terrible atrocity. Um, you know, they were uh, very diligent in their response, and I know that there was one also in uh, on Copeland Ave recently, too. Uh, so good to see, uh, you know, our, our first responders hard at work uh, taking care of uh, service for the people. So thank you very much. Thank you, Council. Council DeBone? Oh, that, was, that was it. Okay. Any other presentations of petitions, memorials, or remonstrance? I would... Uh, just like to take a moment and recognize the passing of uh, one Mr. Bob Papa from uh, Lawn Avenue down in Quincy Point. And uh, I remember the actual day quite vividly that I met Mr. Papa when I was first campaigning for city councilor. And just a uh, bright, energetic personality. And, um, you know, a guy that literally knew everything that was going on in the neighborhood. And uh, just, a, just a pleasure to, uh, to have known uh, he was. Obviously, he had multiple children. He was a grandfather to multiple grandkids. And um, he was uh, just an absolute neighborhood advocate. So I certainly, uh, our thoughts and prayers go out to the Papa family in this, uh, in this uh, trying time. Um, with that, any other? No? OK. Motions, orders, and resolutions? No? All right. Uh, scheduling of committee meeting and public hearings. We're back in this room on April 1st. Councilor Harris, uh, I believe you have a meeting already scheduled, sorry. Oh, so yeah, thanks for just bringing it up. And uh, yes, at six o'clock, uh, two weeks from tonight. Um, uh, of course, uh, um, again, it, it has to do with the uh, testimony of the Native American organizations that uh, actually thanked us uh, earlier tonight through the uh, so I just uh, hope everybody uh, comes out and um, comes out to see see and listen to what these folks have to say and it's pretty interesting reading uh, as I've been reading up on some of the uh, material that's been brought forward to me so I look forward to uh, hearing the testimony two weeks from tonight Thank you, Council, and you're on for 6 p.m. on the 1st? Yes, yes, please. All right, and Thank then you. we'll be followed by a regularly scheduled City Council meeting. Councilor Kane. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, we're going to schedule uh, two joint finance ordinance and downtown uh, committee meetings for April 3rd and April 29th at 6.30 p.m. Uh, to discuss the impending LDA with Fox Rock. Um, and I'd like to schedule another meeting on Tuesday, April 16th at 6.30 p.m. Uh, this will be finance for uh, discussion of the $61 million DIF package. And um, we're gonna schedule 
public hearings as well that will start at the beginning of uh, the 16th. I'll summarize everything okay. and send it out to everyone. Great. Thank you, Jen. All right, so we have 4-3 and 4-29 joint hearings, finance and ordinance, both 6-30 kickoff times with public hearing proceeding. Yes. And then 4-16 uh, with the diff request. Yes. Perfect. And then um, just to, I, I want to make a quick announcement. Okay. We are starting in Ward 3 a town hall series that's kicking off this Wednesday. Um, just in light of the success of the, the meeting that we had had in December uh, at Wollaston School with the Quincy Police Department, um, you know, decided it was a good opportunity to allow folks to interact with some of the other departments that serve them. So we're going to uh, kick off a, a, a town hall meeting on Wednesday at 7 p.m. this Wednesday, the 20th. Uh, it'll be uh, featuring planning, zoning, and inspectional services with uh, uh, Jim Fatsies, the planning director, and Jay Duca, the director of inspectional services. So uh, those in Ward 3, we hope to see you. And uh, if you're not in Ward 3, we'd, we'd still love to have you. Uh, the departments serve you the same. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other scheduling of meetings? Councillor Liang. Um, thanks. I'm going to have two meetings coming up in under ordinance. The first is going to be on Monday, April 22nd, before our regular meeting. Uh, we're going to start at 6.30 p.m. for a public hearing for um, Council Order 2019-34. Mr. President, that's um, one of your parking ordinances. And then we'll have the regular meeting, or the regular committee meeting, I mean, start at 6.40. Um, and then another ordinance meeting we're going to schedule for Council Order 2019-42. That's for the URDP, and that's going to be on April 24th, starting at 6.30 p.m. again with the public <coughs> hearing. And then we'll roll into the ordinance committee meeting. Thank you kindly. Um, on the 22nd public hearing on the zoning. Yes. Uh, Planner Fatsies, is that item on your agenda for the planning board? Unfortunately, I didn't hear what you said. Do you, want, do you mind coming up for a moment? Just want to, well, it has to go through planning in order to. 422 at 6.30 p.m. Sorry to put you on the spot. Um, the zoning amendment that's we chatted about before the last planning board meeting. It missed the cutoff. Is yes, it on for the next? that is on the next. That is on so the next. So that will board. be through. Yes. Okay, I just Perfect. didn't want you to, you know, come here and it's not through planning. Just want to maximize your time and everybody else's. So. No, I appreciate that. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other scheduling of meetings at this point in time? Seeing none, I would entertain. So moved. Close the city council meeting at 8.51.